What is up everybody and welcome to FLW videos. In today's episode, we're gonna be focusing on something that's more of a conversational piece, a little bit more of an opinion piece rather than just strictly covering information. For those of you who have followed my channel for a long period of time, you know that I like to stick to the information, but occasionally I stick my neck out and provide criticism to Niantic, to Pokemon Go, the way that things are implemented, all for the idea that I think the game could be done in a better way. Now the most recent event that we ended up seeing with this as far as criticism is concerned was centered around Shiny Dino throughout the Dragon Week and it just basically being non-existent in eggs and of course the rates not being disclosed to people a lot of people felt deceived well here we are less than a month later and the same thing is happening again but this time centered around mega evolution pokemon which is a huge shame because i myself was so excited to get mega pokemon added into the game but as more and more little pieces of information ended up coming out and now officially in the game we can see that the system is not truly what we had hoped it would be and it's very unfortunate of course we are going to be addressing all of that in today's episode but if you do enjoy talking about topics like this if you enjoy being candid if you enjoy being like kind of open about these types of things make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and so without further ado let's go ahead and get into the video So I want to go ahead and go over a couple of tweets by a couple of different content creators. And the first one is by Trainer Tips. So if you're not familiar with the whole mega system, hopefully this will end up making sense. And I'll of course answer a couple of these questions along the way. So I'm going to refer to this as the mega loop. I think that that is a very good description of this. So let's go ahead and start. So you need to get out there and do mega raids. Why do you need to do mega raids? So that you can obtain mega energy. Why do you need to obtain mega energy? So that you can mega evolve. Well, why do you need to mega evolve? So that you can do more damage well why do you need to do more damage so that you can do mega raids faster so why do you need to do mega raids faster well you will be able to gain more mega energy from doing it faster now that's a mechanic that they added into it where the quicker you can beat the raid the more mega energy that you will get hence you could theoretically have to do less raids by getting more mega energy finally why do you need more mega energy so that you can mega evolve again to do the exact same thing. So this loop continues, continues, and continues. An interesting business model from that regard, like, I mean, if there's never an end to it, then it theoretically is self-maintaining itself. But the problem with it is the value proposition at the end of this. When you start saying to yourself, well, why am I going through this loop? How much does it cost me to go through this loop? And what is the benefit of it? The benefit appears to not be that great of a benefit. We'll walk through the best case scenario, at least right now, and then talk about some of the limitations along the way a little bit later in the video. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about something briefly uh, for what Swag Tips ended up tweeting out. So the initial cost for you to mega evolve a Pokemon differs based on the Pokemon. But for example, something like a Charizard costs 200 mega energy to be able to mega evolve the first time. Now you're talking about having to go out and do anywhere between four and five specific Charizard rates to get enough mega energy to evolve mega Charizard for the first time. But luckily, luckily, there is a discount for every other time you Mega Evolve after that, where it's going to be 50 Mega Energy. So the unfortunate thing with this is that means you're going to actually end up having to do roughly two additional raids against Charizard to be able to Mega Evolve at one time. So ladies and gentlemen, let's let this sink in. You're going to have to do roughly five raids to be able to Mega Evolve for the first time. During a pandemic, which we are in right now, most people are doing remote raids. And if you're doing remote raids, you're paying for it. So you're spending anywhere between four and five dollars to be able to get yourself that mega evolution for the first time. And then for every single mega evolution after that, two dollars. That's just crazy to think about that. And then, of course, we'll address it. But the actual boost for the Pokemon is temporary. Not only is it temporary, it's very temporary. It's only four hours and you can only have one mega evolution at a time. So if you've got a mega Charizard and then you're like, well, I'm going to go up against a Blastoise. So I want to go ahead and uh, mega evolve my Venusaur. If you do that, your Charizard is no longer mega evolved. And then if you were to switch back, you're going to have to pay that additional 50 energy to do it again. And then of course, to make this even worse is that it is species specific. You have to go and raid a mega Charizard to get that mega Charizard energy to be able to mega evolve your Charizard. You're not getting any type of, I guess, rare candy equivalent in these mega raids where you can go just go raid a hundred Charizards because that's actually what you want. And then you can develop enough mega energy that you can go ahead and divvy over to Venusaur. Maybe you don't care as much about Venusaur, but you would like to get it in the Pokedex. 
or maybe even a Blastoise for that matter. But regardless of that, we don't have any type of rare candy equivalent. Now here's the problem with this. I can promise you Niantic already has an idea for how they're going to introduce sort of a rare candy for this Mega Energy where you can apply it to any Pokemon that you want that can Mega Evolve. I can promise you that they already have that. Of course, I don't know how long it will take for them to come out, but the way that they think about this from a business perspective is that they're just gonna say, you know what, you gotta go out there and do all these raids. So you're gonna go out and do Venusaur raids, you're gonna do Charizard raids, Blastoise raids, theoretically do three times the amount of raids to get out there and Mega Evolve those Pokemon. So Niantic is sitting in the back saying, well, we're just gonna let people go out there and raid more than what they really want to because they want to get those Pokemon. And then later on, they're gonna be the saviors and, pr and provide the solution for these mega rare candies if you wanna look at it that way, or the equivalent of mega rare candy. And people are gonna go, thank you Niantic, you listen to the community, but the issue is, is that they already knew the problem because they created it and then provided the solution, which is very dangerous business tactic. It's very smart to do that. But if you think about it logically, I, I can almost just guarantee three months, four months from now, we are going to see this mega rare candy come out. And it just blows my mind that they would rather just not do it, let people spend a lot of money and then introduce it later for those other people once the initial hype is completely gone. So let's go and dive a little bit further into this. So I did mention the cost here, and I also stated that you're gonna be spending a ton of money to go out there and get these different Pokemon for the Pokedex entry, but this also introduces the concept of FOMO. So that is referred to as the fear of missing out. Now the reason why I say this is it's something that's actually very familiar in Pokemon Go to you because it's it has to do with the temporary nature and the rotation of different Pokemon. So for example, you have no idea when these Pokemon are going to end up coming back into Mega Raids. So your thought process is, is, I gotta go out there and raid these Pokemon super hard because I never know when any of them are going to come back and I'm going to get a second chance to build up that Mega Energy since we don't have any type of rare candy for this Mega Energy. You're going out there and you're saying, I gotta do these right now. But then the problem is, is that the next rotation happens. And then you say to yourself, I have to go out there and do it right now. And then the next set comes out and you keep saying that to yourself. Well, Niantic figured this model out. They end up doing it, for example, when they were releasing new generations where instead of just releasing them all in bulk like they did, that was so hype. When they were releasing Gen 2 just in bulk, that was amazing, so much fun. But now they just do this slow trickle release and they start thinking to themselves, well, how can we monetize this? How can we do this? And, and the two kind of core concepts ended up being just putting them behind egg systems to where you're going to have to pay for incubators to get a chance at a Pokemon or locking it behind raids where you're going to have to pay to do raid or just do raids to be able to obtain some type of new Pokemon. It's very unfortunate, but unfortunately that model makes them a lot of money. So they are applying it to the mega evolution. But I wanted to mention the, the fear of missing out because I feel like that is a huge component as to why Niantic is doing this and how it technically makes them successful. So anyways, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about this. Like I said before, we've got that whole temporary issue of the bonuses only being for four hours and you're spending six, seven, eight dollars to be able to mega evolve a Pokemon one to two times for four hours. It's just not worth it. What are you going to do? Beat a raid 15 seconds earlier? You're going to go out there and get yourself that mega Charizard. Why? Now I understand for someone who tries to do like just extreme solos and stuff, that can make sense, but that's more or less just from like a, a challenge perspective. But if you're saying to yourself, I want to get myself a, a Charizard Y, which is going to be, what, 15, 20 seconds better performance than something like a Reshiram, at least Reshiram is permanent. So the investment that you made into that Pokemon is literally going to be permanent over time versus Charizard Y, which is only going to be better than Reshiram for four hours. So that's just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind as far as the value proposition is concerned. So best case scenario, like we talked about, uh, disregard all this stuff. I, I just couldn't find any good screenshots online, so I, I did find this one, but um, basically with this Pokemon, yeah, sure, you can beat other Fire-type Pokemon specifically, but only for those four hours and only for now because there are going to be other Mega Evolution Pokemon that are going to end up trumping this Mega Charizard. So raiding in these Mega Charizards, I, I understand it for the Pokedex entry, but using it as an actual tactic to go out there and be that much better at raids. I think the benefit just isn't there. It technically is there. I just don't think it's worth it. But of course, I would love to know what you think about that in the comment section below. Now, the last point that I have is a little bit more of a speculation piece, but for those of you out there who are just trying to just grasp for straws and find some type of value out of this mega system, 
I think some people have actually stumbled upon something which I think is very interesting. So I want you to go ahead and notice this. So this trainer Elliot Dunlow has the mega icon in the raid, right? But as you can see below, they don't have any mega evolution Pokemon. There's no, you know, mega Charizard. There's no mega Beedrill. And just behind the scenes, what they actually had was they went ahead and evolved their mega Beedrill just to do it. They got it from the quest line. So it was free in that regard. So I understand that. But uh, they basically have themselves a mega Beedrill and then they just went into raids. Now, here's the crazy thing about this is you end up seeing that there's, there's actually a bonus associated to doing more damage if you have a mega Pokemon. Now, initially people thought that that meant getting in there and battling with a mega Pokemon, but this trainer by accident ended up discovering that the icons are actually showing up when you just simply have a mega Pokemon and not necessarily using it. Now, does that mean that the bonus actually gets applied? We're gonna have to dig into it a little bit further, but the reason why I'm bringing this up is a weird way that people may actually end up using mega Pokemon is using them as kind of mule Pokemon if you want to look at it that way. So, for example, Mega Beedrill costs 100 on the initial Mega Evolution, but then 25 Mega Energy after that. So, let's say you've got a Mega Beedrill and then it only costs 25 Mega Energy and you've built up some energy. People may end up doing this and it costs so little and it's for a Pokemon that no one like really cares about that they may actually Mega Evolve Pokemon, not use them, but then go and do raids and get an additional bonus added onto it as far as damage is concerned. And that's actually a little bit more long term more than anything else. And if you really, and I mean desperately, if you really want to get out there and get yourself some of these Mega Evolution Pokemon, I think you should do what Zionic did. So for fun, Zionic went in there with some Dittos and the Dittos will actually Mega Evolve and mirror the Mega Evolution Pokemon. So if you really want to use those Mega Pokemon, maybe just do that. Go ahead and scratch your itch a little bit. Maybe just do one raid just kind of for fun like that. But regardless of all of that, I honestly don't think that this system makes a lot of sense. I don't think it is sustainable. I think that it focuses more on the fear of missing out model. But as soon as people get a break from it, as soon as people just kind of like take a step back and start thinking about the amount of money that they spent or they start reflecting on it, they're going to realize, why did I do that? What's the benefit of it? I don't really get a lot out of this. But I, of course, would love to know what you think about this in the comment section below. So definitely a very interesting topic, and I know that it is a big concern of a lot of people. So I would love to know what you think about it in the comment section below, and I will see you next time. Huge shout out to the supporters over at Patreon. If you would like to get exclusive perks, make sure to check out that link in the description, and I will see you next time.